Hi, today I'll be coding a navigation effect you may have already seen on Patreon. We have the selected navigation item and all the items after it and before it have this bar on the side nearest to it. So if we change the selected item, you see that also the items before it get this bar on the side nearest to it. And if we skip items, then all the items in between the previously selected one and the newly selected one change the side on which they have that bar. So we start with an array of objects. Each object corresponds to a navigation item. And here we're going to have a wrapper. And on it, we set in a style attribute the index of the selected item. So this is going to be zero initially. Then we're going to have a loop. So everything um, after dash is just like JavaScript and uh, it doesn't show up in the final HTML. So let i from zero all the way up to n increment it at every step and of course dash there and here we're going to have input uh, type radio and we only want the first one checked so checked is going to be not i and then we're going to have a label which is going to contain the text of uh, the item at index i so i text and now I want to show you something. If I click this, it's not going to get selected. And that's because we haven't connected the input and the label. So we set an ID on the input, and this is going to be option index i. And we use the same attribute value from the ID to set on the for attribute of the label. And now you're going to see it gets checked, but this one remains checked. And that's because we haven't grouped these uh, radio buttons. And we group them by giving them the same name. And this should now fix everything. Now, we want to change the value of this k whenever we uh, select a different one. So in order to do so, let's go here. So whenever a different item gets uh, selected, so uh, whenever a different input gets checked, a change event gets triggered. So um, change, and we're going to modify that k value on change. So um, first off, um, we get the input, which is the event target. Then we get the form, which is its parent, so parent node. And in its style attribute, we set property k, okay, I can't type, k, 2. Uh, and here we can extract the index from the ID, or we can also set value equal to i. Okay, so um, whichever you want, I'll be using the value one, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, after having done this, let's bring up DevTools because I want to show you that it works. So now it's currently, k is currently zero, but if I select something else, it's going to change and you can see it changed. Okay, so that's it. The JavaScript works. Let's go back to the markup because there's one little thing I want to set. Uh, so here in a style attribute, I want to set the index of this label and it's going to be i and i also want to set a color which is going to be the item at index i um sorry color so now i'm going to have type radio and um Here, set the color. Okay, so this works. But the effect we want here, it's pretty much an effect that I've shown before. So if you remember this demo, great. If not, you can go watch the video of me coding it. It's about nine minutes, I believe. So I show how to get this uh, effect on hover. And now it's not going to, going to be on hover, it's going to be on the item being selected. And in that video, I explained that when we have a light background and dark text, 
we can't get this effect using this method. So what we do is use a dark background and light text and then invert the whole thing. Use an invert filter, as you can see there. So um, let's go back here and we're going to set background to black and then on the form we're just going to invert everything. So um, filter invert so one one means full inversion okay and another thing i want to do is just uh, give this form a background and it's not going to be black it's going to be something slightly lighter which is going to translate to a light uh gray a really light gray so um let's set a padding because it drives me nuts to see it like that so um Okay, now it's starting to look more like something. And let's also tweak the font. So bump it up in size, increase the line height. Okay, get rid of the curly stuff. Okay, uh, the line height isn't doing anything. So display grid. And let's also set a grid gap and make it equal to the padding okay and now it's starting to look better uh we'll get back to it to fix it but first we want to invert this color from here so um, what we'll be doing is taking it from there and um, let see now you see all these colors have the same six hex format which means we can extract the channels with a simple regular expression. So, um, now we have obtained an array um, from there and we want to invert those channels. And the way we invert channels is we subtract their value out of 255. So the problem here is that these channels are hex strings. So they're hexadecimal strings. So we need to convert them to decimal. So parse int, and we have our hex strings. Okay, base 16. And now we take this, and we have uh, the decimal, and we revert to hex strings. So to string base 16 and now we just uh, join the whole thing and we're going to need that okay so it's going to be a proper hex value now okay so these are the initial colors we wanted to have so perfect now let's go back to this and um, let's set grid auto flow uh, column okay now this has worked uh, something else I want to do here is white space no wrap okay now this is going to look better now the whole thing is that thing ends there so we need to set uh, here we need to set a min width and this is going to be max content okay and something else we want for the situation where this is a lot bigger so um, we're going to want to set a place content so place content center so if this is a lot longer, then they're all going to be in the middle. Now this looks a lot nicer, doesn't it? Okay, now having done this, uh, let's also create a pseudo element here. So an after pseudo element. So it's basically the same technique as in the link hover effect. Position absolute. Actually, I'm just going to... Uh, 
copy paste this part because I hate writing that part. So uh, content uh, nothing and um, I think I can take a bit more. So background, current color and uh, mixed blend mode difference. Just uh, going to paste those there. Okay, so um, yeah. Position relative, this should do it. Okay, this did it, but we don't want all of them highlighted like this. Uh, so we want the ones uh, before, we want to have a highlight on this side, and the ones after, we want them to have a highlight on this side. So. In order to do so, we're going to compute the absolute value of the difference between the select the index of the selected item and the index of each and every one of these. So for each label, we're going to have the absolute value. It's going to be the maximum between k minus i and i minus k. So calc k. And uh, now we're going to take this copy, paste, and just uh, switch i and uh, k. And now that I've done this, I'm going to uh, compute the sign. So if k is greater than i, then this is going to be positive and this is going to be negative. So it's going to be discarded. And if it's the other way around, then this one is going to be negative and this one is going to be positive. So this one, the first one is going to be discarded. If they're equal, they're both going to be zero and the value is going to be uh, zero. So now we compute the sign. So uh, the sign is the difference. So this uh, difference right here, let's put it between parentheses over the absolute value. So, um, okay. So the sign is going to be minus one for those before it's going to be zero for the current one, and uh, it's going to be um, plus one for the ones after. So now let's do something with this. So we can set a transform, uh, translate. So for example, we can set calc, the sign times 50%. Um, and it's going to look weird because they go outside their uh, parent labels. So we're going to set overflow hidden right here. And now you can see that these have the second half highlighted and these have the first half. But we don't want 50% there. Uh, we want 100% minus the padding. So minus. And we need to interpolate. Okay. So now that I've done this, it looks nice. But let's also set a padding here and it's going to be zero vertically and twice that padding horizontally. Okay, now let's hide those. Um, so position absolute opacity zero and also both for these and for the label following them. Um, we're going to have cursor pointer. Okay, so this looks nice. As you can see, it moves from one to the other. One thing I don't like is that we have less space here than we have here. So we could fix this with a text indent. So setting something similar to this for text indent, or we can put this text in a before pseudo element. And that's what we'll be doing right now. So put this in a before pseudo element. So Okay, now let's say we have before content, we use that attribute volume. Okay, now we also want to set display block on them and we want to set something similar to this, except we're not going to have 100% there. And let's uh, get rid of that as well. We're going to have minus half, so minus 0.5. So 
So yeah, this uh, fixes it. And something else I want is a transition. So both for the before and for the after, I want to have a transition and I want to specify the property uh, transitioned for better performance. Okay, so now that I've done this, I can click this and you can see it works nicely. And of course, this expands there. Of course, the horizontal scroll bar looks nasty, but we can figure out other ways of getting from one side to the other if uh, the whole navigation becomes too wide. So um, I'll be leaving that to you or for another time. If you want, let me know in the comments if you want me to do something like that. But for now, I'll end the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you like my work, the work I've been putting out for the past eight years and something, you can uh, be a cool cat and support it on Patreon, or you can get me something off my Amazon wish list, or you can at least share this to show the world what can be done with CSS these days, because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching. All the links for this are going to be in the description, my Patreon link, uh, my Amazon wishlist link, the link for this demo, the link for the other stuff referenced in this video. They're all going to be in the description below. So until next time, bye.